So global wind patterns actually work like this. So they work in these cells called Hadley cells. And you have these um, upwelling convection currents that rise and fall. And this gives rise to our major wet and dry areas of the world. Okay? But in general, warm, warm air moves to cold air. All right? So warm particles move to cold particles. Now this, um, this dense, cold air that we get up at the poles, it'll diffuse into the ocean currents and then that cold water, that heat, that, that cold gets transferred back to the equator. So temperature is regulated by ocean currents and by wind currents combined with the rotation of the Earth. So these are called Hadley cells. And they exist in multiple latitudes on Earth. Okay, so what can happen is, is anything that gets sprayed in these tropical or temperate or, you know, subarctic regions, pesticides or herbicides, because they don't break down, they kind of hitch a ride on these Hadley cells toward the poles. Okay, so to the North and South Poles. So they don't go away because they don't break down, but they end up going towards the Arctic and the Antarctic. And they end up in the food webs of the Arctic and the Antarctic. And um, animals that consume other animals end up biomagnifying these persistent organic pollutants um, in their fat stores. So essentially, some of these animals become toxic waste as a result. So it's quite harmful for them. And you can see if you're like an Inuit subsistence hunter, how your food resources could be um, severely compromised because of that. So that's the grasshopper effect, and you need to know that. Okay, so we're almost done here. Another thing that you should understand is eutrophication. We talked about this in Bio 20. Um, eutrophication, so uh, what it is, is it's nutrient enrichment into an aquatic ecosystem. So as we, right, so as we use more fertilizer on generally agricultural fields, we use nitrogen and phosphorus. Okay, um, and then that ends up, um, the excess nitrogen and phosphorus ends up being um, washed off into aquatic ecosystems. And it does the same thing in an aquatic ecosystem as it would do in a terrestrial ecosystem. It causes plant growth. And plants in the ocean or in an aquatic ecosystem are algae. So that causes algae blooms. And initially that's good, but what happens is, is algae die, they need to be decomposed. And decomposers use cellular respiration to decompose that dead algae. What that does as a result is um, the decomposers composing, decomposing all this extra algae use up all the oxygen in um, an ecosystem to do that. So eutrophied ecosystem is at risk of becoming oxygen depleted. Okay. And it basically the animals as a result, even though the initial food resources are great, um, what happens is oxygen starts to choke off the ability for other organisms to undergo cellular respiration like fish and other living things and um, they essentially suffocate in the environment so this is um this is a so this is a lake in the experimental lakes area of northern ontario this is algae bloom in a eutrophied system so extra nitrogen and phosphorus and that is what the lake should normally look like okay so these are all in my notes as well, right? So um, what happens with eutrophication is the dissolved oxygen content goes down. We can also look at indicator species, right? So that's a brown trout. There are certain species that require lots of oxygen in order to survive. Trout are one of them. So what we can see is as the system gets eutrophied, um, the types of species change. So you generally get lower quality aquatic organisms in low oxygen levels. So carp, catfish will show up in areas um, of water bodies that are eutrophied. Trout generally exist in fast flowing, cold, um, non-turbid or, or, or clear streams with rocky bottoms, right? So that's why we have lots of trout in the Bow River right now. Um, and, and, and the rest of our trout fisheries in Alberta. So that's the key thing. Eutrophication decreases dissolved oxygen because what it does is it increases biological oxygen demand. So eutrophication increases BOD. 
and decrease is DO. So you need to know that. So BOD is the amount of dissolved oxygen needed by decomposers to break down organic matter. So as organic matter increases, or in this case algae, BOD increases because there's more living tissue that's required to be decomposed. So that's why eutrophication is a really big problem. More nutrients means a big increase in primary productivity or initially photosynthesis. But those algae die off. Okay. And when they're decomposed, the decomposers basically starve the environment of oxygen, um, decomposing all that extra algae. And you get, this is a, a picture I took actually when I was in university on Lake Ontario. And this happens every summer. Um, warm water can hold less oxygen. And if the system is eutrophied, then there's even less oxygen in the system. So this is a kill of whitefish. This is called summer kill. Okay. Right, so you can see this is summer kill. This is in the Cataraqui River, actually, just yeah, close to Kingston. All right. So warm water bodies don't hold as much oxygen, and if they're eutrophied, there's even less oxygen. And that causes, that suffocates the animals, basically, from the inside out. This is winter kill. Okay, so this is on the Great Lakes as well. These are carp, actually. But what happens here in winter is um, in a eutrophied system, there's ice over top of, the, of a lake, right? And as a result, um, the, uh, as a result the, the, there's no exchange with oxygen between the atmosphere and the, and the body of water. So if that, if that um, uh, body of water is covered in ice, then what's left it, for oxygen underneath um, is what has to get these organisms through the winter until breakup happens and then the lake can turn over. Um, if it's eutrophied, then there's even less oxygen. So this is an example of winter kill. Winter kill can often be more severe than summer kill because there's absolutely no exchange at all with the atmosphere and with the water body. So this is in your book, um, but this is another, th sorry, this is in your um, hydrocarbon chart. So your last molecule is actually this, bisphenol A. Okay. So, these persistent organic pollutants look a lot like hormones. So, BPA looks like estrogen. It's called an endocrine disruptor because it messes up with your hormones. So, um, plastics like old Nalgene models were made of BPA. And what we found was that um, the BPA was leaching into the water and people were consuming it. And as a result, um, becoming feminized and having all sorts of um, endocrine problems. Uh, so we, um, we removed uh, the BPA from the plastic. So water bottles are no longer allowed to be made with BPA. But a lot of these, um, a lot of these plastics, these polyesters actually look like hormones. So they cause endocrine disruption. All right. Um, anyway, this is just, just some summary notes. You can look at that. And that's it for environmental chemistry. So uh, I'll post this lecture. You know what your assignments are. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. I will start physics in a couple days um, and I'll post your assignments in the next few days as well. Okay, so stay tuned on the newsfeed and keep up the good work. Bye now.